Morning to the Drive to School podcast. I'm still Pastor Goodman, and uh, joining me is the president of Higher Things, Pastor Dwayne Bombs. How are you today, boss? Doing doing fantastic, and yourself? Doing well, doing well. We got a uh, church coming right up around the corner, so what am I going to learn there? Uh, we're coming up on Lent 5, so Lent is almost over already. It seemed like it just started. Ash Wednesday was, what, last week, and, and here we are. See, we have different um, Lenten perspectives this year. Um, so yeah, I understand that it's a it's a time blur when you're the one doing all the preaching. But right now, it's just I'm I'm marking all of the ways that I've uh, failed in my fasting and recognized how much I need Jesus. Um, Lent has been dragging. It's been good though. Isn't it a great thing that uh, Jesus loves us even when we mess up with the fast? Amen. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. So so yeah, Lent five this week. Um, and in our our three-year lectionary, the, the hymn of the day for Lent 5, um, which, you know, the gospel reading for Lent 5 is uh, the, this, the vineyard owner sending his son after the messengers have been killed. And she, he says, surely they will hear my son. Um, and of course, they think, oh, the son's here. That means the dad is, the owner's dead. So that means we can get the vineyard if we kill the son, which is a parable on, on uh, the religious leaders of of Jesus day um, and saying, if we get rid of Jesus, then we're in charge again. And, and so the hymn of the day, yeah, that really works. Doesn't it? It's a wonderful plan until it isn't. (laughs) Show him how wrong he is by fulfilling the parable that he told us we were going to. Fulfilling the exact thing. Uh, And so the hymn of the day that's appointed for, for this Sunday is a LSB 430. My song is love unknown. Um, Yeah, seven verses, um, which sort of recapture and recapitulate or retell the whole story of Lent uh, in in seven stanzas. Um, You know, my my song is love unknown, my Savior's love to me, love to the loveless shown that they might lovely be. You know, who am I that for my sake, my Lord to take frail flesh and die? Um, and, and there again, there's, there's the parable love to the loveless shown that they might lovely be even in the midst of, of, of all of this hatred and, and anger towards our Lord and what he has to say, who he represents and what he's here to do. Even in the midst of that, um, the Lord Jesus says, my love is for you. You may seem loveless to the world, but I love you. Um, which, you know, even in, in our own lives, the times you know, taking, setting aside for a moment, the text and just looking at our own selves and saying, you know, there are those days when we feel like we are unlovable. You know, how can anybody love me the way I am or after what I've done, or I just don't feel like anybody can love me. They're here or more Jesus still in the midst of that loves us. Um, which is what kind of verse two does is, um, you know, he came from his blessed throne, um, salvation to bestow, you know, the, but uh, my friend indeed, who at my need, his, his life could spend that, that, that he sets aside everything that he is and everything that he has, you know, that, that and was made man set aside his divine power and his glory to become, to become like us. Um, which is where verse, verse three sort of comes in there, right? Sometimes they strew his way and his sweet praises sing, resounding all the day, hosannas to their king. And halfway through the verse, it changes. Then crucify is all their breath. And for his death, they thirst and cry. And so looking forward to next week, looking forward to Palm Sunday, that uh, what, what is it? We see him, this popular teacher, this popular preacher, he's coming in, he's here to, to save us all. He's here to throw out the, the Romans and, and give us back our land. And, oh, wait, he's not? Oh, wait, no, 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 no. You're, you're, not, you're not the Messiah we want. Get out. Yeah. <laughs> 
it's uh, it's it's interesting that I, I mean I've watched both of the, I mean the, those three verses they don't just sort of build up the the picture of Lent that was but Lent that is um there there's such a, a trend to to love yourself um to to mark yourself as 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 um love that you have to first love yourself before anybody else will and the the reality is when I look in the mirror I got all the reasons I don't love myself right there and instead of marking all of those all of my sins all of my shortcomings everything that other people have done to me to make me less we start with he has become man that that I am loved such that God would literally set aside being God just to be a little bit closer to me to to save me and then I should in, in the face of this, do nothing but praise him all day long. And mm-hmm. I so quickly run back to the same awful things. And, and I turn right with the crowds. And, and I, I, I say, uh, you know, I got, I, got, I got other stuff right now. We'll do Jesus stuff on Sunday. But, but for right now, I'm going I'm to get to sin. And uh, it, it's, it's not just Lent that was, but Lent that is that we get to sing about. What happens next? Help me in the midst of this. Yeah. It, uh, and, and that's what where we go from there, uh, you've got a, a reminder of who Jesus is and what he's been doing, right? The, um, what there's, they say, crucify, crucify. They're crying for his death. And, and verse four starts with the question, why? Why are they crying for his death? What has he done? What makes, what makes this rage in spite? He made the lame to run. He gave the blind their, swat, their sight. Um, yet at these miracles they themselves displease and against him rise and then you know they save the murderer you know a murderer they save the prince of life they slay yet cheerful he to suffering goes that he his foes from thence might free Hmm. so why why are they why would anybody look so angrily at the Messiah who comes to heal and to restore and that he set, he sets aside his, his divine, his full divinity, right. To become man, but he, he, he retains, you know, he is still son of God. So he retains that, that creative power. You know, he speaks restoration. And why do they want to get rid of that? Why do they rage against that? You know, he, he heals and he, he restores. They, they save a murderer instead. But why? Because he goes cheerful. And I think there's a little poetic license here. He cheerfully goes to suffering. You know, when he's in the garden, what is he praying? You know, if there's and any other way, it would be great. It would be, would be fantastic. It would be, yeah, it would be great if there's any other possible way than the cross but but the the cheer though i think is is the eye on the the end so the the cheerfulness is that he's going to forgive sins and that's what he's about and that's that's also the thing that everybody's struggling with because well if you're not a sinner what do you do with a jesus who says you are one and i'm going to die for you right yeah it's kind of the difference between uh happiness and joy Ooh, go on to that explain that to me yeah happiness is an emotion right you could be happy one minute, sad the next. Mm-hmm. Uh, but even in the midst of even in the midst of sorrow, there is joy. Um, you know, I've I've got uh, two memorial services next week, and even in the midst of people that are going to be sorrowful at the death of loved ones, there is joy in knowing that they trusted in Jesus, and that they now rest with the Lord, and their struggle and their 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 pain on earth is no more. They now rest with the saints and the angels waiting for the last day. Um, and they don't have to worry about anything else that's happening in this world. So there's joy in knowing that even in the midst of sorrow. So here, yeah, he's, there is, because he, because the result of Jesus' death is resurrection and restoration and forgiveness and life everlasting, there is a reason to be joyful even as he goes to die that seems like it's so important to keep straight because if christianity is going to be a happy religion instead of a joyful religion i'm really really bad at christianity because like you said it takes stubbing my toe in the coffee table to ruin a whole of uh, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting but if it's if it's joy that means i actually get to struggle and even fail sometimes and still have peace in the victory exactly exactly 
Yeah. And then, you know, verses six and seven kind of, kind of bring it home, you know, in life, no house, no home, my Lord on earth might have in death, no friendly tomb, but what a stranger gave. What may I say? Heaven was his home, but mine, the tomb wherein he lay. That, that there again, he's, he is the Lord of life and he comes to earth to inhabit our life, the fullness of our life, even the grave. So that we then may join. He redeemed my grave. He redeemed your grave. That's, that's everything. It every makes, single, every single grave. Yes. It makes staring it down a lot easier. Huh? Mm-hmm. Right. And you, you see that even you see some of that in, in a lot of our other hymnody. Um, it, uh, uh, oh shoot, uh, uh, God's own child, right? Is it God's own child? Um, that, you know, yeah. My grave stares at me, you know, even oh, yeah. there I'm safe. I'm safe in peaceful sleep. You know, it's it that what, what even does this hole in the ground have to do to us? Nothing because Jesus was even there. Yeah. Even what there. we sing in church really does matter. It's not just about how we're feeling at the minute. That's that's a happiness, but we actually get to sing about joy. Um, what what we get to sing then this this coming Sunday is it's it's a confession that all of this stuff that we're doing this whole end season is for something. It's it's for me. Uh, it, it it matters how we sing. Yeah, absolutely. All right, is there one more verse? One more verse. Um, closing out. Uh, you know, here might I stay and sing. No story so divine. Never was love, dear king. Never was grief like thine. This is my friend in whose sweet praise I all my days could gladly spend. So, you know, here, you know, gathered here with the saints uh, around, around the altar where the gifts are given. Uh, I might stay and sing. There, there's no story that matches this one. There was never a love uh, like this. There never was a grief like his. Because one, he's got the love, his love extends and covers everyone on earth. But it comes at such a grievous cost. But this is my friend, Mm -hmm. this Lord Jesus, uh, in whose sweet praise I I could spend all my days gladly singing his praises because this is what he's done for me. This is what he gave up for me. And this is what he has to give me. Life everlasting. Awesome. Can't top that. So uh, thanks so much for joining us for the drive to school. We're just going to call it on a high note. Uh, Pastor Bombs, the president of Higher Things. Uh, Thanks again. Have a good one. Absolutely. You do the same.